O Lord, do not stay afar off, my strength make haste to help me, for I am a worm and no man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God who have made all those reborn in Christ a chosen race and a royal priesthood, grant us, we pray, the grace to will and to do what you command, that the people called to eternal life may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am going to take the sons of Israel from the nations where they have gone. I shall gather them together from everywhere and bring them home to their own soil. I shall make them into one nation in my own land and on the mountains of Israel and one king is to be king of them all. They will no longer form two nations, nor be two separate kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves with their idols and their filthy practices and all their sins. I shall rescue them from all the betrayals they have been guilty of. I shall cleanse them they shall be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David will reign over them, one shepherd for all. They will follow my observances, respect my laws, and practice them. They will live in the land that I, have, that I gave my servant Jacob, the land in which your ancestors lived. They will live in it, they, their children, their children's children, forever. David, my servant, is to be their prince forever. I shall make a covenant of peace with them, an eternal covenant with them. I shall resettle them and increase them. I shall settle my sanctuary among them forever. I shall make my home above them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. And the nations will learn that I am the Lord, the sanctifier of Israel, when my sanctuary is with them forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us like a shepherd guarding his flock. O nations, hear the word of the Lord, proclaim it to the far off coasts. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and guard him as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us like a shepherd guarding his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, has saved him from an overpowering hand. They will come and shout for joy on Mount Zion. 
They will stream to the blessings of the Lord. The Lord will guard us like a shepherd guarding his flock. Then the young girls will rejoice and will dance. The men, young and old, will be glad. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console them, give gladness for grief. The Lord will guard us like a shepherd guarding his flock. The Gospel Acclamation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Rid yourselves of all your sins and make a new heart and a new spirit. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to tell the Pharisees what he had done. Then the chief priests and Pharisees called a meeting. Here is this man working all these signs, they said, and what action are we taking? If we let him go on this way, everybody will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy the holy place and our nation. One of them, Caiaphas, the high priest that year, said, You don't seem to have grasped the situation at all. You fail to see that it is better for one man to die for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed. He did not speak in his own person. It was as high priest that he made this prophecy that Jesus was to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather together in unity the scattered children of God. From that day, they were determined to kill him. So Jesus no longer went about openly among the Jews, but left the district for a town called Ephraim, in the country bordering on the desert, and stayed there with his disciples. The Jewish Passover drew near, and many of the country people who had gone up to Jerusalem to purify themselves looked out for Jesus, saying to one another as they stood about in the temple, What do you think? Will he come to the festival or not? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it extraordinary, brothers and sisters? Our Lord has raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus, who was in the tomb four days, had already started to decay. Our Lord raised him to life again. You would think that would convince them. But even our Lord said, remember in his parable about the rich man and the poor man Lazarus, that even if someone should rise from the dead, they would not be convinced. And here, clearly, it is evident they are not convinced. And even though they're not mentioned in this gospel passage, we know the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. And so we can be sure they were furious at this. This goes right against their belief, a belief that didn't come from their hearts, but, became, but came from their arrogance. And so with the Pharisees, arrogant again. And they get things completely the wrong way around. They're frightened. They see the power of Jesus. They see his signs, but they don't want them. They don't want to accept what God is revealing to them through him, in him. He who is God made man is revealing the truth and they don't want it. Isn't that terrible? Isn't it heartbreaking? And so Caiaphas, when he speaks as high priest, he utters a prophecy, a prophecy which he himself does not really understand. He says, it is better for one man to die for the people, to die for the nation, to die to save us. But he thinks that Christ's death will save Jerusalem, will save their power, will save their authority. But it's the opposite. Because they rejected the Messiah, because they rejected God's gift of salvation, not only is the temple completely destroyed, but so is Jerusalem. If they had accepted Christ, the story would have been completely different. 
And so now Jesus comes into that time where he is soon going to be arrested. But he does not allow it to happen until the time is right. Because his death is the great sacrifice, the paschal sacrifice. He is the paschal lamb. So he must die at the right time as a sign for all of what he has done. This leaves us with the question of our faith again. Do we truly accept Jesus? Because it's very easy to, con to convince ourselves, ourselves that we accept him, but to actually fall into the trap of the Pharisees. And what is that trap? The trap of the Pharisees is worshipping this world, is worshipping the power and authority, the things we cling to of this world. And that's the danger. And many fall into it. They put this world above Christ, above the things of God, above heaven, where it's got to be the other way around. We must put Christ first. We must put everything he taught us first. We must put his gospel into practice and cling to him with everything that we are because whether we like it or not, this world is passing away and those who cling to this world will be lost with it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept that sacrifice and your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for I am the good of all of his holy church. May the gifts we offer from our fasting be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray. And as an expiation for our sins, may they make us worthy of your grace and lead us to what you promise for eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received the heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty since by the wondrous power of the cross your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord of God of hosts, heaven and earth, earth are full of Lord. your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis Alfred and Vincent our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. 
For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise that they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and the truth, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protective help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count it among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice of spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels who alter on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, of all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment like in peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, with whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, sanctify and fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. As the Saviour's command, called by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For Lord, I am not worthy to produce and enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen. Mother of mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, all banished children of the deep. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in the valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, shine to us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. 